What's up, everyone? Special live stream, What Makes This Song Great? Live analysis today. Okay, so what I have behind me are notes. For those of you that don't read notes, this is a Beatles song, complete with a melody and harmony parts. And one of the reasons I want to talk about this, I know some of you are sick of the Beatles, but there's much to be learned from this from an ear training point of view and a, um, and a harmonic analysis point of view and a melody point of view. Okay, so we're going to learn about chord progressions, melodies, and harmonies, how to create harmonies, because all the principles of these things are the same, no matter what the style of music, if it's Z clarity, if it's, you know, uh, Nirvana, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. Soundgarden, you know, uh, uh, Bon Jovi or, or Def Leppard or Boston or Led Zeppelin, all these principles of melody are the same. I'm going to give you a very simple rule before we start, okay? But before that, I have a discount code. Anything on my website here, the Beato book, anything on there, discount code, even the ear training course, RB512, 35% off everything. Uh, somebody knows what song this is. Okay, so um, that's how I support my channel. And this is going to be, we're going to talk about ear training and how it relates to this as well, because this is actually a very sophisticated uh, song. And when I learned this as a kid, when I started learning these things about how they were able to put these sophisticated chord progressions together with melodies, and I think, I'm just going to say it right out there, that George Martin had to have something to do with this. And I'll explain why. There's a couple key things here that I don't really think, and I'm the biggest Beatles fan in the world, but I think that there are some things that just never would have happened if it wasn't for him. Okay, so for those of you that don't know this song, it's In My Life. It's probably going to get demonetized and everything, but I don't care because it's this is really one of the best teaching songs that there is. Okay, this is... Uh Okay, so that you guys know that song. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. Okay, that's what I have written out here. Let's talk about that, what happens at the beginning here. So, so the lower, this is a case where all the harmony parts are the upper notes. So in this case, D, C sharp, uh, D there, those are the melody notes. Uh, I'm sorry, these are the harmony notes, the ones on the top. The melody notes are on the bottom here, okay? Uh, there are three sharps in this, which means it's in the key of A major, which you would know um, the, uh, if you know your key signatures. One of the things that's in my book, the first thing I teach people are key signatures. How many sharps and flats are in what key, right? So A major has three sharps. So anytime you have the notes F sharp, C sharp, or G sharp, for those of you that don't read music, I'll talk about what notes they are. Those notes are always sharped, okay? So in the first bar, the pickup, we have this note F sharp, okay? It says F, but you know because of this key signature is F sharp, okay? Now, let's talk about what's going on here. Let's do a harmonic analysis and melodic analysis at the, at the same time. So in the first bar, it starts on the one chord. So I'm gonna just put a Roman numeral one here. Then it goes to the five chord, okay? E is the five chord. Okay, so if you know the, key, the chords in A major, uh, you'll know then that F sharp minor is seven is the two chord. It's really a two seven. Then this chord here, A seven over G, this is the tricky, this is the interesting stuff. I'm gonna analyze the first line harmonically, then talk about the melody. This is where George Martin comes in to me. There is no way, as much of a genius as Paul McCartney is, there's no way that Paul McCartney uh, thought of that. I'm sorry, okay? So you've got A, E, F sharp minor seven, and then to this A seven over G. It's really A over G, but it's a third inversion A seven chord. Okay, so you're going F sharp minor to A seven. But what they did is they went to this chord, okay? Now that's just so odd to do that, right? There are places I remember, then all my life, the sun have changed. 
Okay, so this is really a fascinating uh, thing there. So this chord here, A7, is the five of four. Okay, the, this is the four chords. So this is a secondary dominant. So this would be a five of four, going to four, going to the four minor, okay? That's, a, that's definitely a modal, uh, modal interchange there, back to one. Okay, I'm gonna put these in parentheses so you can see them. That's the harmonic progression here. This is very, very sophisticated, all right? Now, if I talk about what's going on melodically, sorry about the white balance, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out here. I'll sit here so the white balance is better. Um, okay, so in the first bar, if you think of this as an A chord, so we start on the E, which is the fifth. So the melody goes on A. Uh, it's, well, actually we're on the E chord on the pickup. So it's, uh, it goes E, F sharp. So it's the root of the E chord, right? And then goes right to the note B on the A chord. But it's more like a, um, it's almost like a, uh, an upper neighbor, okay? Because it's resolving down to the root there, okay? So it's, it's like a suspension. Then you got, and then we go into the E chord and then, fifth to the sixth, and then up to E, which is the seventh of F sharp minor. So if you start looking at these things, the sophistication of the melody is that this is actually a suspension that resolves down, okay? So the B resolves to A, so that's a two to one, right? That's a second of A down to the root. And this is just harmonized in thirds, okay? And then it goes back up to a chord tone to the fifth, to the sixth, and this is jumps up to the seventh of F sharp minor, okay? And then down to the fifth. So other than those, not, the non-chord tones are on the weak beats, okay? Like um, if you think of this as um, um, here, this, the uh, C sharp here, that is the sixth, okay? This is actually acting uh, as a lead into the F sharp minor to give the ear, the reason it sounds so good is it gives the ear that sound of that F sharp minor and leads you into that chord, right? Uh, da, 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 right? Uh, it's all pentatonic, it's all A major. And then do do, then it goes do, right? So it goes the to the B, da da, and that note acts as almost as a suspension on the D chord. That's sixth there. Okay, and that four minor chord. It's so great because the four minor chord gives it so much harmonic movement. So. That, that is an incredibly strong chord progression. One, five, two minor, five, uh, five, seven of four, four, four minor. So you have a mod you have modal interchange in there. And then if you look at the melody here, right? So what do you have here? You've got on the A7 chord, you have the, the ninth to the third. Then you go to D and you have the, uh, uh, you have the B here, which is the sixth, but it's harmonized with the root and the third of D major, okay? These harmonies then are held over. That root stays there, and then the top voice goes from F sharp, because don't forget with the key signature, this is F sharp, and then this is F natural to follow right along with the chord progression, okay? Because it's going from the third of this chord of the D major to the third of D minor, and then right down to the fifth. Per perfect stepwise motion in the top harmony, 
perfect motion with a common tone here between the two chords, the root D, D, and then down to C sharp, down a half step. That's perfect voice leading. And once again, this is George Martin, I think, saying, well, I mean, these guys had incredibly good ear for harmony. McCartney and Lennon, I mean, all three of them. So you've got uh, on the D chord, right? You have this. Those are the top harmony parts that happen, okay? Uh, then we're on A, and then he jumps from the, from the E. Once again, this is really strong melody writing here with these big interval jumps going way down from the fifth, jumping up a sixth to the third of the chord, okay? So E to C sharp. And then back down to the E to the fifth, to the sixth, and then the melody repeats again. When you get down here, it's the same melody, and then it goes to the B section, where it goes, um, uh, uh, do, do. Uh, so it's so this F sharp minor chord here is the two chord. Once again. I'm sorry, what am I doing? It's not the two chord, I screwed up. This is the six chord. Ah, excuse me here, six, seven. Here, once again, you're at the six chord, right? And then this sound here though, what's interesting about this is that it's the six chord in A major, but what we have here, we have this D sharp here, okay? Because of that D sharp, you're implying a different key. This is once again a modal melody here, right? In the harmony parts, because this is a B major chord here. You have this, you have uh, an F sharp minor. So you've got C sharp. This harmony here is C sharp, E, G sharp. That would be C sharp minor over F sharp in the bass, down to B major, okay? So B major over here, this is why I, when I was thinking here, when I was thinking the two chord, this is really would be the two chord in E major, okay? Because of that B, this is another modal interchange that's happening because in the key of A major, there is no D sharp, right? It's D natural. We have D naturals here. Okay, right there on the E7 chord, because it's an E7 chord, and that chord is. But on the bridge, we have the. You have that modal interchange where it actually becomes Dorian. So this is actually F sharp Dorian. So it's the function. This is what's so fascinating about this. The function of this chord in A is as, as a six chord, but it's really a modal interchange because instead of Aeolian, which would be the sixth mode, this is Dorian here. This is what is brilliant about the Beatles because all of these subtle things, and this is once again why I think that George Martin was instrumental in, in the sound of this, okay? So this is acting as the two chord in the key of E. So you're almost have gone to the dominant here, but then you're back to D. So, um, it's really D7 here. Um, um hold on one second here okay uh, ba -ba -da. Uh, sorry, da, da, the major seventh on there. Um, then we've got um, uh, on the G chord. 
once again, that G chord then is uh, has the C sharp on it. So this is really Lydian, right? Because this note is the sharp four. Okay, so we have this here on the D chord. This is the major seven, okay? Down to the sixth. And then you have this Lydian sound. So G Lydian, if you think about this, if we're in the key of A, right? Well, there is no G in the key of A. So what do you say, huh? Okay, there is no G in the key of A. So what is that G? What has happened? Okay, so this G major chord is functioning, if you think of it as, you say, okay, well, that's the four chord in D. So are we in D major? Well, I would say, yes, we are in D major here, okay? Here we are, because this chord has the major seventh and this has the sharp four. So that C sharp there, we've actually, it appears like this is the one chord in D major. So it appears that we have modulated to the key of D here. That's what it sounds like to my ear. And then the A, here could function as the five chord, but actually it sounds like you're back to the tonic. This is what is so hip about this song, okay? The next time around though, we have F sharp minor to B, okay? Then, so he's going, um, da -da 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 da 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 right? So he's got B major, so that's your two five. Let me get in the camera here. Da, uh, da, da, in my life, I've loved you more. Right? Um, that's right. So this uh, F sharp minor to B major is actually. There's a couple different ways you can analyze this. This is why it's so, so tricky here. Here, this is functioning as a 2-5 in the key of E, all right? So this F sharp minor here, if you think of it as the sixth chord in the key of A, it doesn't really function as a sixth chord because of this D sharp. So this is really from E major. That's really the two chord in E major. Because here, let me go over here, this is really E major. Two, seven, to five. The only tricky thing is, then we go back to four minor. This is so brilliant to one. Okay, this is a modal interchange because you're definitely back, you're definitely back to the tonic there, A. Okay. So this, this is such a s seemingly simple, um, uh, this is seemingly a simple, simple song, but it's very complex. Okay, so let me talk about why these things are important to know and uh, about, uh, um, about melody writing here, okay? So... There's a couple different things that are going on level-wise here. So you have some modal interchange where you have chords that start to function as different chords. Okay, now this stuff, uh, modal interchange is in my book. I have a lot of, uh, I talk a lot about this, as you guys know in my videos about modes, about modal interchange. My Beato book really explains this stuff in depth because this is, to me, what's with the beauty of harmony and melody is understanding how chord progressions work together, and how to come up with really interesting substitutions for your writing. Because this is ultimately what you want to know how to do. You want to learn how to write interesting melodies, have interesting chord progressions, and how to get out of using, let me get this back in here, how to get out of using just stock devices, okay? Um, there's... Uh, in one, I mean, how many bars do we have here? Like 16 bars or so? I don't even know. I even count them. You guys could probably count them. Four, eight, 10, what, 10 bars, 12 bars? I mean, nothing. This is such a, a simple song. Um, 
this is such a simple song, yet it's very complicated, okay? When you start saying, okay, well, the F sharp minor in the first bar, in the, or the second bar, functions as a sixth chord because you're in the key of A major, right? It's like, okay, yeah, it's obvious there. But by the time you get down to the second line, to the, to the chorus section here, um, F sharp minor, then it starts to function as a two chord in the key of E, but then you're in D major here for sure, because that major seven uh, and the sharp four here, that's definitely one to, one to the four chord in the key of D, okay? So if I say that this is the four chord in the key of D, what would this be? Well, you'd say, well, that's the five chord in the key of D, but it's also the one chord in the key of A. So it's one of these things that has dual function, right? That's a, that's a dual function. I would say this, you could analyze this as a flat seven to one. There's a lot of different ways that you can analyze this and you're right about it, okay? What the Beatles did is that they knew how to take, how to, use these sophisticated notes on the chords. This is why, this is what I call modal writing. You hear me talk about modes <clears throat> in my book on the ear training course, by the way, these that they're both, uh, everything is on sale. My Beato book, the ear training course, RB512. One of the things that, that I teach people to do is to recognize these things, how you can, uh, how you can, use these notes, these, these non-chord tones in the key, right? Or um, like on this G chord, these extended notes, the sharp four that don't typically happen on there, okay? These modal chord progressions, the four minor is a modal chord progression, right? Because it, it comes from the parallel, uh, the parallel minor key. So for an A major, there is no, the, uh, the, the four chord, D minor, the four chord is normally A, right? One, four, one. I cover this all in the first, right in the beginning of my book, I talk about this. Uh, the modal interchange and, and where you get your four minors from. So the four minor is really the four chord in, in, the, in the key of A minor, okay? Four, one. But in major, it's four major to one. So when you have a four minor chord, it's borrowing it from the parallel minor. The parallel minor to A major is A minor, okay? So that's, anytime you have a four minor chord, which are probably the most common things that you hear, uh, you know, you hear it in Radiohead, you hear it in, you know, Porcupine Tree, whoever. You always hear four minor chords, and it always sounds like the Beatles. Why? Because they knew back then that that was a very strong move. Right? If I took, uh, you know, the song. Uh, take that Radiohead song. I didn't play it exactly the same because I don't want it to, I don't want to flag it. I won't say the name. Uh, but that's a, there's a four minor chord in there. Why? Because that's really strong voice leading. It's modal harmony. It borrows from the parallel uh, parallel minor key. And to understand these things is to really understand harmony. And when you start getting these more sophisticated modal chord progressions and modal lines, this stuff is just genius here. All these harmony parts here that, that, that add in those notes. Why did they choose those other notes? I think that because George Martin sat at the piano. Now, George Martin does the piano solo in here that sounds like Bach that was done at half speed and, and, then, uh, and then sped up to double speed to make it sound like Bach. And George Martin plays that. So there's no question that they were thinking about Bach when they did this. No question about it. This is one of the things that they <clears throat> had in their head and in their ears. McCartney was thinking this. Um, or did Lennon write this? I think Lennon actually wrote this. Um, anyways, the ability to be able to recognize these chord progressions too is very important, okay? Knowing that there's that A7 over G or A over G chord there and saying, okay, that's weird, right? If you're in the key of A major, 
So A major has the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F, G sharp, right? Back to A. Well, in this chord, it has G natural instead of G sharp. So you've got, you have G sharp in here, so it's one, five, six, and that's, once again, that would be like five, seven, a four to that, to the four minor, back to one. Incredibly strong voice leading, right? You have the voice leading of the ace of this chord. That fifth motion in the bass, but really you have C sharp to D, and then you have All of that inner voice movement is what makes the song great. Okay, so you, you take this, you take a melody that's a chord tone based melody, you harmonize it, and then you start using these more sophisticated devices like modal interchange or using D sharp on the sixth chord in the key of A major, which actually turns it into the two chord of E major. Okay, because that, that D sharp is in E major, okay? And then you use F natural on the D minor chord because F sharp is in there. So you have all these accidentals in the melody. This is why it's so interesting and why it lasted so long. Okay, so um, discount code, Beato book, anything in my store. This is how I support my channel. I don't like to do, do this. I don't ever bother you guys with ads or anything during my videos. I just talk about this. I, I mentioned it on my live streams, but I support my channel by basically just selling stuff in my store, my Beato book, my ear training course. This is how I'm able to make videos for free. I'm up to 750 videos or so on my channel. And, you know, and I don't have to do sponsorships. I don't want to do sponsor, sponsorships. I don't want to waste people's time in my videos by, by doing ads. I don't have any problem with people doing ads on their videos or in, in uh, you know, with podcasts or anything like that. When you guys get on there, I took out my intro on most of my videos and I took it out so that I didn't have to have people sit through it because people are busy. It's like, all right, let's just get to the stuff, right? Let's start, let's start working on it. This is really, uh, you know, this is important. And these, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. I want to just talk about the Beatles for a second, because I know a lot of you tuned in for the Beatles. The Beatles, I start to see in the comments section, people that are anti-Beatles. Um, and it's one of the things that's kind of distressing to me is that the Beatles, well, now out of fashion with young people, the Beatles you know, music now is nearly 60 years old. Okay, <laughs> just about my age. I was born the year of 62, the year of the Beatles put out their first recordings. Uh, but there's so much to be learned from this because I really believe that so much between Little Richard, who just died, who created the vocal stylings of every rock singer, Roger Daltrey, uh, Paul McCartney, everyone based their things on, on Little Richard. Chris Cornell, Robert Plant, his style of singing is really the archetype of the of the of rock music. L Little Richard in particular. And I really wanted to talk about that today too because his influence on the Beatles was massively big. His influence on Elvis was massively big. So, uh Roger Daltrey, oh my God, listen to these guys, the scream of Little Richard. So I have a video that I did, one of my top 20 videos was the top 20 vocal sounds, okay? Now, it wasn't the top 20 vocalists of all time. If you guys have seen that video, it's got over a million views on my channel, but I, 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 it was early on. I didn't put anyone in order, but Little Richard was the first person that I put in the video and I compared all the people to Little Richard. People were like, "Why didn't you have Steve Perry on there? Why didn't you have this? You know, Steve Walsh from from you know from uh, Kansas. Why didn't you have blah 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 in there? Because they are not Brad Delp from Boston. Why? And I said because the people that I had in there were the ones that had direct 
lineage to Little Richard, okay? That's why he was so important of a, of a singer and artist, because his vocal stylings were the basis of, of real rock singing to me. I mean, of, of, of heavy rock, intense rock singing. So um, that, this is why Little Richard was so important. Read Bob Dylan, what he said about Little Richard. He said that he, I mean, he invented this stuff, you know? I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. 87 years old. Incredible, incredible. So um, when people don't go back to the roots of, of this music, I don't care if you're an EDM producer now. I don't care if you're a, you know, if, you, if you're a hip hop producer and you're, and you're trying to come up with a good, you know, keyboard part behind some, you know, some dr drum, you know, some beat that you have and you want to create some tension in there. Well, all that stuff began back in the 50s and 60s. All those kind of chord progressions, things like that, all the good voice leading, the dissonances, everything like that. And the principles of a melody are the same no matter what era you are in. You get uh, chord tones on strong beats, non-chord tones on weak beats, passing tones on weak beats. These are the principles of melody, okay? If you follow these principles, when I say strong beats, I mean down beats, one, two, three, and four. Up beats, the ands of one, two, three, and four, you would typically have passing tones and um, passing tones, chromatic passing tones, or non-chord tones, the second, the, the, the fourth, and the sixth of the scale. Okay, so these, these are the principles of melody. If you want to be a great melody writer, it does not matter what genre of music you, you are in. Bach followed these things. The Beatles followed them. Max Martin follows them. Bruno Mars follows them. Pharrell follows them. If they have a song that's a hit song, Roger Daltrey, Eddie Vedder, Kurt Cobain, Prince, Jimi Hendrix, they followed these rules, all of them. Songs that were hit songs follow these rules, and I call them principles of melody, okay? Chord tones on strong beats, non-chord tones and passing tones on weak beats. It doesn't matter what the subdivision is. If you start subdividing eighth notes, every other eighth note on weak beats are going to be the are going to follow the same things non chord tones and passing tones. If you have sixteenth notes, same thing. Every other sixteenth note will be a chord tone or a passing tone. If your melody is really strong, if you analyze Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, they follow all jazz musicians that are great soloists follow these exact rules. Doesn't matter if it's Alice in Chains or or whoever. They all follow these rules. If the songs are catchy to the ear, they follow these exact principles. Occasionally you will have a non-chord tone on a strong beat like here, but it's always going to be acting as a, it's always going to resolve down to a chord tone on the next beat, okay? That's how this works. Those are the principles of melody. The uh, My Beato book, you want to learn about this stuff and be able to recognize, you should be able to recognize these chord progressions by ear. You should be able to go one, five, six, five, seven of four, to four, to four minor, to one. You should have that skill. Everyone should have that skill. If you're a great musician, if you're a good musician, you should have that skill. If you want to play Nashville Sessions, you got to have that skill. If you want to be able to improvise over chord progressions, you got to have this skill. You got to be able to recognize chord progressions by ear. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> and thank you to everybody with all the with the uh, with the the super chats. I'm going to go back and read them now. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel too. It means so much to me. It's helping me create content for you guys. And, and not have to do ads, not have to take on any sponsors. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste anyone's time with it. I like to get in there and do that. If you want to support the channel, buy something from my store, ear training course, Beato book, a t-shirt, whatever. You guys know what to do. Go to my rickbeato.com. You can find the stuff there. Thank you so much.
Uh, I have more, I have another What Makes This Song Great coming out this week, episode 90. I got some big ones coming up through the rest of the, uh, from 90 to 100. Stay tuned for those. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do. If you can't read the notes, you got to know the notes in treble clef and bass clef, at least that are on the staff, okay? You should learn that. It's a very simple skill to have. It involves a little bit of memorization, but you can do it. All right? There's a reason to learn this stuff. Notation is the language of music. It's the written language of music. It's important. Basic notation you should be able to read. Peace. You guys are amazing. Thank you.